Okay, g'day guys, just answering a couple of questions from the forum. Ian has asked, uh, naming issues with existing versing pr versus proposed walls for renovation projects. Now I surmise the reason why Ian is asking the question is because he doesn't want to quantify what's in the existing house. So I've opened up my wall tool, I'm going to select existing. So what I'm going to draw down here may be the existing house that Ian's referring to here. Okay. Now what it's done is it's drawn the house. If I click on those walls, they're red. The reason why that is the case is that you don't want to bump by mistake uh, a wall. So I, you know I can't move these walls, I can't delete these walls easily without actually going and using a tool to delete them and unlock them. Okay, so I think the reason why Ian's asking the question is that he wants to be able to differentiate between existing and new. Another good thing that 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 Plusbeck has done, and and we developed this on purpose, was so we can extend houses, right? So this particular wall here, I might say I need an extension to come out of here and here. So what I can do is I can go right click, I can go to my walls, and I can split the walls. I can also use the toolbar in the wall tool, and say I wanted to split the walls here, I can go enter. Now I'm still not going to get anything out of these walls, so I've just done a quick takeoff, and you'll notice in the takeoff there's nothing in there. Okay. <clears throat> but I do want to demolish this wall here so I go back up to my wall tool and I click on demolish okay here now I go submit if I do a takeoff now it's going to tell me how much I've got to throw away and if I create a floor plan you'll notice that it'll actually automatically uh, show us a demolished wall in, in our floor plans yes I do uh, floor plan okay you notice here it's quickly outlined that this wall here is going to be deleted alright uh, so now we know that in our floor plan is going to be deleted. We probably don't need that black in there. Okay, so I can see we're going to demolish this wall. Right, so now what I want to do is go back to all and I want to do some new walls. Okay, go up to here, <clears throat> simply deselect if it's not already done, existing versus new, and then go and draw in whatever you want the extension to be. Okay. Right, now I have, if I do a takeoff now, I'll have demolition and new. So here we go, takeoff. Sorry, i got two screens open here, guys. Okay, now I have everything that I need to buy and quantify in there. There's a, there's a good reason for that. Okay, um, let's have a look at what some of his other questions are. Okay, so so now what if, the next thing he's asked is uh, layering issues and so on. Uh, how do I go about changing the layers? Uh, so changing layering issues, and he finds it more straightforward than to use the numbering system. He likes to use an alphabetic order system. Okay, the reason why we use a numbering system for our layers, and you'll notice that we've also created all of these layers here. I'll just purge anything that's unused. You'll notice that they have a number in the front of them. There is a distinct reason for that, and that reason being that these are the, the standard order of progression you would build a job. So when you think about the logic of how do I go and find my frame, instead of looking for um, timber or frame or whatever it might be, you go, well, what's the, the logical job progression? Uh, therefore, frame being the second here. If I put a concrete slab in here, I can go and meld these walls together, I'll quickly select this wall and this wall here and I'll right click walls and I'll project and join these walls this way I can go and create a, a slab okay so now I can select one wall, right click walls uh, generate floor face from walls okay I can then go inside of my floor face and I can create my slab okay uh, and whatever it is I'm going to do I'm just going to go submit okay so I've now created my slab right Notice that the slab went in front of everything else that was needed to be. The logic in using numbers is the progression of the job. In saying that, you can override it. So if I went over to here and I, can, I wanted to override the layer name of here, I can go back to my wall, into my wall tool, <clears throat> and I can change the layer that this wall's on by going to layer. Now there are inherent problems if you do this, I don't recommend to do it. And if you are going to do it, change the one time value, okay? you can change these to whatever you call and the problem is going to be that when you change these layer names you are no longer going to be able to select these scenes up here because scenes work in association with layers my advice is to stick with the layer names that you've got there until you're a bit more of a pro user and then change the layers to be honest the logic once you understand why we did it will very quickly allow you to understand where to look for information 
All right, good on you guys. I uh, hope that helps out a lot, Ian. Uh, mate, by all means, uh, put another reply. Cheers.